Many times when we're doing an experiment where we're systematically changing one variable, we end up with data that actually has two different linear trends in it. So let's take a look at how we can analyze that uh, when that occurs. Well, first of all, why are there multiple trends? Um, it's really not that unusual. Um, whenever we think about a trend, whenever we think about a, a tendency in our data, it has something to do with an assumption that's being made or a condition that's being met. So if there are multiple trends, it just means that in different parts of our data under different conditions, different assumptions or different conditions are um, dominant. Many times when we look at uh, data that have two different trends in them, uh, the answer is the place where those trends cross. Um, but one of the challenging parts there is fairly often the place where they cross gives us some of the less reliable data. So it's hard to find one experiment that, that really is the magic experiment for us. So remember, um, don't always try to find the magic experiment. Uh, try to find an experiment that makes sense. Try to define your trends rather than uh, find one point. Uh, and also just a little uh, just a little caveat here. Linear trends aren't some mystical being. Um, you know, don't fit something to a line just because you like lines. Uh, make sure there's a, a good reason for it. There often is. Um, so just think about why you're using a line to fit your data rather than just blindly going ahead and using a line. So let's look at some data. Um, I just put together some kind of random simulated data here. Um, here we go. You know, yellow orange dots. And if we look at this, it looks kind of like there's one trend that's sort of going up in this direction and maybe another trend that's going in this direction. Now this this could be this could be a curve, but given that it's got two different two different slopes just visually, I think I want to try to fit this to uh, two lines instead of a single uh, curve. So what do we have for trends? Again, over here we've got some data that looks reasonably good uh, as uh, one trend and over here we've got another trend that we can explore. So here's where we have to make a decision. <clears throat> now we certainly could use a computer program. You know, we could use Excel uh, to generate some very nice mathematically rigorous fits. Um, and it would work and it's great. It, it's honestly not that hard, but it's harder than it needs to be perhaps. Um, for a lot of the analysis that we're doing, it's probably okay for us to fit the data by eye um, and will come pretty close. One other thing that I'll warn you about, uh, the online uh, web browser based version of Microsoft Office is a really, really nice product. It's portable, it's, it's available on anything, but in order to make it available on anything and portable and web-based, they had to remove an awful lot of the function, especially, in my opinion, in Excel. So a lot of the things that you really want to do in Excel, a lot of the tools you want to be able to use just aren't there in the online version. So especially when you're using Excel, but also when you're using other uh, parts of uh, the online Microsoft Office, use the desktop version to do your data crunch and your data analysis. Um, otherwise, you're going to be missing tools that will make it a little frustrating. Okay, so we're back at our data. We want to put in trend lines, but we don't just want to connect points. We want to put in trend lines that seem like they make sense with the data. So here's you know, green trend line that looks like it fits the data okay. You know, I've got one point that misses pretty far low, but I've got a couple that miss 
reasonably high, you know, I, I think that's an okay trend line for that data. Similarly, on the other side, we've got another trend line. Again, we've got a point that misses high, a point that misses low, another one that misses a little low. So that seems like a reasonable trend line for that data. Now we get to the important part. What do they mean? Well, again, if we look at this, the green line, this trend line, is where condition A is true, whatever condition A might be. Um, if you're doing a chemistry experiment, often condition A will have to do with a limiting reagent. So, you know, condition A might be that one of the reagents is limiting. If we look at the other trend, that's where condition B is true. And that condition, again, in the same example, might be the other one is limiting. So the important thing to do in this data is find that place where those cross because at that point, both conditions A and condition B are true. That ends up being a really powerful place. So how can we um, how can we analyze that? Well, we can do it by eye. I find it helps. Uh, to draw a little visual reference. And I've got a note here, hold down the shift key while drawing lines can help. Um, if you do that, you'll find that the lines that you draw are either perfectly vertical or perfectly horizontal or at 45 degrees. So rather than just having a free form line that can be any angle, it makes your lines a little bit straighter. So let's take a look at our line. Looks like we're crossing through our point and gets us down to the axis where we can take a little bit closer look. Um, so blowing that up, looks like that line came down and crossed at right about 1.59 um, on the x-axis there. So that's all there is to it. It's, it's really not uh, anything that... Um, that new or that wild it's it's just kind of walking through a typical data analysis like this now this works with a ton of different types of data sets again all we need to have is two linear trends um you know the one that we did the one that i did here is one i'd call a hill um but we can also look at plateau data like this where it's two linear trends we can look at v data um or you know, anything in between, any version of those. And we can get some really interesting results by analyzing the transition where both of our experimental conditions happen to be true.